Hey guys, welcome to Drew Brew. I know it's pretty late, but I had uh, this on my bucket list for a while now. I've wanted to design a treasure chest, so uh, here it goes. I figured I'd make it into a tutorial. Uh, anyways, let's start off by making that square, what we usually have to do. So I'm going to start off by two feet. Usually uh, that's a good size, and even in the real world. So make a square box, two feet by two feet. And then obviously we need that half circle up top. Uh, and let's make it a rectangle, you know, four feet, two by four feet. That's a good size. Uh, I would love to have a treasure chest this size. Imagine it filled with gold. That would be ideal. <laughs> so let's get started. What do we do from here? All right, so we're going to focus first on the rectangular part. So we hide uh, the top opening. Uh, and then let's do an offset so uh, that we can have that frame. As you saw in the picture in the beginning, uh, there's a metal frame all around and that's what gives it the structural integrity so we need uh, basically a specific size i chose 20 millimeters because i thought it looked really good so uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread that out all the way to the edge so that we can work with that and as you can see i have that top there in there we're gonna remove that later so make sure that your uh, measurements are accurate as you do these kinds of things Anyways, uh, after we do that, we just have to basically offset it again so we, we can cut away a little piece uh, that we don't need. Uh, basically the center piece since it's going to be the wood on the inside. And basically we're going to cut away by shoving that forward. Uh, 20 millimeters is our frame size, so keep that in mind for the rest of the video. And uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And then I realized, hey... Uh, that's gonna be a lot of work if we have to do the same thing on every side. So why don't we just cut the thing in half uh, and then mirror it? Uh, that would make our job simpler. So let's make that line. And then remember that you can make any shape to cut away as long as it's bigger than the original item that you're cutting. Uh, so let's cut that away and we can cut our <laughs> work in half as well. All right, so that's part of that. Uh, let's continue on. So what do we do from here? we have to extend it 40 to 40 millimeters on the side so that we have uh, that 20 millimeter edge on every side and we also need the top layer there uh, let's go ahead and make sure that's single and extrude that as well so that we have that and uh, as you can see i did make it to the edge but that's fine because we can replace the face and match it up nicely so that's not a problem ever uh, with the tools that we have and there are also times where you can uh, make your job even easier by cutting it up into four slices and then just mirroring that and you got one fourth of the work uh, that wouldn't happen every time unless your object is symmetrical on every side that makes uh, life easier obviously and this is a chest so it's a rectangle uh, that would that definitely helps us out even though it wasn't absolutely necessary but anyways let's continue on and just go ahead and mirror that since we're done with it uh, and uh, yeah, make sure you have the mirror on the right plane because it, it is a little bit uh, sometimes finicky with the mirror tool and so on. You gotta make sure you do it, click it just right. But uh, anyways, you combine those together since we're not gonna need to separate them anymore later. And then uh, I did forget to uh, update the size. So let's make those a little bit thicker uh, to 40 millimeters because we do have to cut away at the end if you remember the picture at the beginning uh, to, to sharpen those points so let's make those 40 millimeters and uh, you can choose your own size you don't have to copy me exactly you just can follow along and make your own decisions but anyways as you can see the the frame cuts into the chest a little bit so we're going to go ahead and subtract it from that so that we have individual pieces that we can work with because uh, you can combine everything but that makes your job of editing anything absolutely a nightmare uh, because it, you, you have to have things separated so that you can just make small little changes to each item. So anyways, we subtract it again after we finish that up and then let's go ahead and uh, mirror that one more time and make sure you're on the right plane and so on. And then we can union those pieces together. Uh, once we've checked and verified that everything looks okay, 
we can do a little bit more fun stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and chamfer uh, the edges here to make it uh, start looking a little bit fancier. Uh, we technically didn't need to do this now, but uh, I just, I don't see it interfering in the work later, so we can start right now. So one of the main advantages of not connecting all your pieces together is you can actually shell something. So if these pieces were union together, it would be a lot harder to do. But since we have them separate, it's not a not a problem at all. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the colors a little bit just to make it look more woody. Uh, <laughs> and I think you will agree with me that this looks a bit more natural. And I forgot to chain for that one. So let's do that now. Uh, before we move on that way we don't forget to do it later so that's looking pretty swell i think we can move on to the lid uh, so let's just match those colors up just to make it look good and uh, we can take away the bottom rectangle so that we can uh, see a little bit easier uh, how we are working on it so let's go ahead and hide that and uh, continue on You've probably noticed by now, I use the offset tool pretty often, uh, but sadly you can't do it on the round piece, so we'll be happy when we got those squares. Uh, and we can use the sweep tool and just follow the contour of that uh, to make our life even simpler. You don't have to sketch anything new on that or make new shapes or any kind of platforms. Uh, so, and then we can extrude the floor and just make sure you make it as a new body, that way it's not uh, coming out of that bottom frame and uh, we're gonna just go ahead and replace the face with the rounded part so that it matches and then we also have to connect those and replace that face as well so that we can have just everything uh, close enough to where in the end we can combine it as one piece although right now don't do it yet because again if you do that now it'll be hard to edit what we're gonna do here is just match the face because uh, when we extruded that part, uh, there was a sketch there interfering with it. Didn't let us extrude all the way around, as you can see a little line over there. Uh, so, yeah, we, we matched the face, did the other side to make sure everything worked. And what we have to do now, basically, uh, instead of mirroring or anything, we could just rotate it 180 degrees, and we basically got that copy. Then we just have to extrude that bottom piece so that we have that uh, the final part of the assembly on the sides. Uh, although I did... Uh, make a little bit of an extra piece here so just follow along we'll, we'll get rid of the pieces that we don't need but anyways make sure that you had extruded that as a new body again because then you, if you didn't it would have been combined to the bottom frame and we need to keep them separate for now anyways uh, i'm just going to match the color just for reference so we can see what we're working with and then we combine all of them uh only for the top frame because again they're separate and uh let's go ahead and fix those up a little bit we're gonna delete everything extra, obviously, but for now, let's just replace the face. And as you can see, I forgot to click other side from the previous time, so make sure you watch that when you're doing it. Uh, and then same thing on this side, let's just replace the face. And then after that, we're just gonna go ahead and delete the extra things that we don't need uh, so we can move along after this. Now we can get to uh, some of the beauty parts again. Let's go ahead and chamfer those edges so they can match the bottom frame. And uh, usually we try to do them all at once together. But uh, as you can see, we're running into a little bit of an issue here. Uh, that usually means user error. So <laughs> let's go ahead and find uh, what's causing us not to be able to uh, do it all at once. Um, let's see. Oh, there it is. There's that gap. Okay, so we, we forgot to replace the face on that one. So let's go ahead and fix that. And uh, at this point, it would have let us uh, if it's not too complicated. So anyways, let's just continue on and chain for that. And we run into a uh, rounded edge problem here that you're going to see uh, in just a sec. And we have multiple options. One is just to delete and another is to extrude so which one do you want to do uh doesn't really matter as long as it gets the job done so i'm gonna leave that up to you 
but I showed you both ways just in case. Then again, we subtract so that we have those solid separate pieces for now because we do have to have them editable. And again, one piece altogether is harder to edit than separate pieces. And you can always combine later. But anyways, let's go ahead and shell that just like the bottom. And we basically have our box complete. So that is looking pretty good. Uh, obviously a far cry from what it should be when it's done but this is a good step in the right direction so uh let me know if you've gotten this far with me down in the comments below i'd love to see your projects uh anyways let's go ahead and move on from this so obviously anybody with treasure would usually put a lock on their treasure to keep people from getting to it so we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and uh draw those right angles before we move them into place just to make it simpler uh and easier for us but we have to center don't forget to center things since this is a, a symmetrical part but anyways uh, we go ahead and make our shape and we have to extrude it and put it in the right place uh, not inside the chest but outside that's where the lock goes uh, make it as a new body so that it's not connected to the front piece so we can edit it and uh, we also have to mm, probably make it look a little bit better because I don't like how it's just hanging there loosely so I want to add a center pivot point uh, so that it looks a little bit fancier that way all right so what we're gonna do is move it up a little bit and uh, we need to put it in half so that we have a plane to work with and we're gonna go ahead and project uh, the side onto that plane so that we can sweep along that line and watch this this is gonna be this is a great tip for you for many projects uh, but it's a piece of cake and look at this you go ahead and you uh, just put that away so you can see what you're doing and you sweep that along the path uh, and we're probably gonna have to hide that one too uh, but anyways you select that uh, edge and you sweep it along the line here and you have a complete piece and you barely did any work so using the right tools at the right time is really advantageous and saves you a lot of time you guys have to remember all these tools and honestly they just they're great uh so anyways let's go ahead and uh let's let's make it a little bit scarier let's make it a double double shield i think that will look really good and let's uh go ahead and move it up a little bit yeah yeah that looks pretty good uh we also have to match that face so let's go ahead and chain for that uh so that we can replace the face and uh as you can see, uh, we have run into a little bit of an issue where it uh, replaced too much face. So let's make a smaller angle so that it follows our directions better. And this time it should work. So there we go. Then we just have to go ahead and union the correct pieces and subtract the other pieces and then mirror the other, <laughs> uh, too much other, uh, this piece. So let's work on that. Actually pretty excited this looks fantastic to me uh, let's go ahead and uh, look wow yeah I really like that so let's go ahead and mirror those pieces so we have both sides and uh, connect them And I don't like how that chest is looking pretty bare back there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put some of the frame away and uh, extrude that all the way to the bottom. I think a continuation of that would look really good. And let's not forget that uh, to make that as a new body so that it's not connected to the top frame. And uh, replace face saves the day as usual. <laughs> And that looks really good. So let's go ahead and open everything back up and uh, we can move on from this for sure. So I really like that so far. I 
I'd say it's almost time to fill her up with treasure. <laughs> let's just not forget. Uh, we don't want anybody to steal that. So let's make a, uh, a lock for it. Uh, so it, you basically uh, can make any type of lock. I just, I'm just going to make something random. Something that looks uh, original and uh, good at the same time. So you can make your own style key. Usually something fancier, obviously. But let's just go ahead and uh, make something simple. Whatever works. I never get tired of uh, looking at my projects after I'm finished doing uh, like a main part. That way I can get uh, motivation to do the rest. Uh, so once you see how good it looks, it kind of makes you want to do more. So uh, let's go ahead and finish up the beautification process. Uh, go ahead and chain for those and uh, continue on from there. So now, now that our chesty is complete, uh, the only thing left is to add some wooden panels. And uh, well, well, while we could have done this uh, out of little tiny pieces and just copied over them and all that, uh, I honestly didn't know the measurements in the beginning of what I needed. Uh, very often I just do projects, uh, I start off doing uh, random things and getting to a certain point. So uh, what I like to do is just uh, go ahead and uh, cut in the center and uh, make those you know, dividends so that I can make things even looking and usually it, things that are centered look pretty good I mean in some cases you need something that's a little bit odd but on most projects uh, center center points look the best so that's that's what we're gonna do here and we're gonna go ahead and learn how to use the project tool <laughs> on a lot of a lot of places uh, so you're gonna watch me do here uh, a little bit of that and uh, just go ahead and follow along. I won't be talking too much here because it's all just repetitive work uh, Until we get textures and shaper anyways So yeah, just follow along and uh, work in your project as you can see me work on mine and uh, You will basically see me project onto every side uh, inside and outside uh, Yeah, I uh, could have done it a little bit better probably uh, shorten the time a little bit, but uh, I'm learning here just like you are. I didn't have a plan for this. Uh, I just went with the flow and <laughs> I'm amazed at how good that looks. Uh, so yeah, feel free to skip this part if you think you have it. Uh, otherwise, just like I said, go ahead and watch through it once uh, and you'll get the picture of how it's done and you will be able to do it on your other projects after that. I'm gonna go ahead and move that just to make it easier to work with uh, but also make sure when you do move it make sure you move it in a specific amount that you will remember easily because uh, sometimes you will lose track and uh, it'll be hard to find your placement after
Okay, so as you, you can see here, uh, probably not the best idea to do that since there's that uh, little keyhole there. So we're gonna have to go and use the other side to project because uh, we want them all to be the lines all the way up. Because if you project half line, then you can't really edit it too much after that, or it might be a, a double line. So we don't want any of that. Anyways, let's move it back and uh, continue on from there. So we need to continue on with the lid and to do that we need to move that sketch up there but uh, I want to make sure it's exactly the same so I'm going to go ahead and press the top line and the bottom line to see the distance on that bottom there and go ahead and move it up that specific distance that way it's right on the edge and uh, we will also have to duplicate this just so that we can get a both sides because this is a round piece it's not going to go all the way around uh, it's only going to go on one half of it and we're gonna have to do the other half as well. So just keep that in mind that round objects are treated a little bit differently. Uh, unless, for example, we could have made it here on up the top and if we spread the lines out, but that's a lot of extra work when we could have just uh, easily duplicated it side to side. So I chose the easier method here just to save some time. But uh, there, are mul there are usually multiple options on how you wanna do a project. So just keep that in mind. As I draw that it just it seems to me like it's not lining up perfectly uh, you will have that sometimes where it doesn't snap to the grid properly because usually it's because of your movement but anyways what we can do is just follow the old line and just extend it up there and that makes it easier so and we can't really project onto a face that the sketch is on as you can see here uh, because it's a sketch so when you try to project it's gonna be a cutoff so what we need to do is move it first and then after it's moved then we can project it. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to do some surface modeling with the projection tool. So I am a bit of a perfectionist, so I do like to do uh, a little extra work here and there, even though I don't have to. Like, you don't have to have every little detail run down on every little project, but uh, I just prefer that if I post a file and someone looks even inside, uh, they're like, wow, even, even here it's complete. So that makes me feel good when it's a complete project and everybody else can appreciate it too. So. It's up to you, obviously, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on the inside as well. Even though, as you can see, not every method of projecting works. So we're going to have to go ahead and use the top sketch instead. And because I forgot to hide the, the bottom chest, uh, we're going to have to find another way in. So usually you can go in through like a zoom in process, which takes forever. But luckily here we have a keyhole. Uh, so we just hacked this chest. <laughs> uh, but yeah usually try to hide something that is in the way uh, and make your life easier but anyways there we go uh, one step at a time and we are almost at the end we are projecting little wood panels uh, so yeah almost there uh, oops that's premature I want to make that a surprise uh, since we're almost done oh, look at that look at that beauty that that is the best chest i've ever drawn honestly like i i used to draw on paper and wow did i suck i i, I knew that once i got into cat everything would be much better 
because the computer makes life uh, a lot easier. This is why it's called computer aided design. Couldn't do it without you, buddy. So yeah, let's just finish up that last one on the bottom. And it is complete, baby. That looks good. I like it. So uh, I hope you made it this far with me. Uh, like I said, I want to see your projects. Uh, and uh, definitely hope you enjoyed your time with me, even though I did uh, ramble a lot here. But hopefully you caught a few tips here and there. Make sure to slam that like button if you liked it. Uh, dislike if you hated it. But uh, don't forget to subscribe and see uh, more stuff coming up. Because like I said, I always do stuff in Shaper. Because uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, even though I don't work for them or anything. I just do this stuff for fun. And also for my clients, obviously, when, when they need me. But like I said, I had fun. I hope you did too. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Hasta la vista, baby. Bye-bye.